What's up, my fellow Scarpenters? <coughs> Savady crap to everybody! Creative Thoughts series building a positional rotary welding table. In this third and final episode, I, do, I would like uh, to talk about motors. Which kind of motor is the best choice for a rotary welding table? In today's video, we are going to analyze pro and cons of AC and DC motors, understanding what is the best solution for a um, positional rotary welding table. Before jumping to it, I really hope that you are going to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for future videos notification, because uh, I'm trying to do my best, believe me. And uh, now, without any further ado, Let's to build some and uh, let's to have fun with the Okay guys, my rotary welding table doesn't work properly. In the last episode of this series, a web link above my head check it about uh, please so you can understand what I'm talking about I built the transmission system connecting an uh, AC motor to the rotary section of the table using an uh, AC motor with that kind of transmission system was uh, a wrong choice my table once uh, slowed down it stops as uh, already told at the beginning of this project uh, I'm far behind my comfort zone. I'm not an engineer and I don't have any kind of training about. Indeed, let's begin by saying that I don't want to teach you anything. I'm here uh, just showing myself, my success alongside my failures. Therefore, let's analyze what went wrong and how I fixed before the problem. To do that. Uh, let me please uh, to publicly thank uh, my friend uh, Giorgio and uh, his channel Zbinf74, link above my head. Please check Giorgio's work because uh, he is an incredible carpenter in steel. In uh, Giorgio's channel you can find uh, very interesting videos, skillful solutions and much more. Alongside that, Giorgio is a really, really nice person. I contacted him and he literally took my child hand, explaining and assisting me in every manner possible. He explained in detail everything that I must to know, teaching me how to properly build a positional rotary table. Indeed, thanks a lot, Giorgio. Your kindness and friendship really, really, really meant. I really hope that uh, this video will be helpful for carpenters out there who, as myself, don't know anything about motors, a way to avoid uh, the same mistake that uh, I did. Let's begin with the AC motor that I mentioned previously and didn't work properly. It was connected directly to the rotary section of the table, no pulley nor belt involved. The motor speed was reduced through a speed reduction controller. It works with 220 watt. Through the reduction controller I can decrease the watt amount induced, so the motor speed. As you can see with the 220 watt motor works fine. As soon as I reduce the watt induced, its speed decreases around 130 watt, the motor stops. Let's uh, try one more time and uh, as you can see exactly the same problem. Why this is happening? Without uh, entering in uh, technical uh, details uh, that uh, obviously I don't have a clue about, uh, let's analyze the problem with uh, simple words so a rookie as myself can easily understand. Let's think about what uh, as current, as uh, the power of uh, electric light. Forgive myself, please, experts out there. An uh, AC motor work uh, in uh, its full power with uh, 220 watt. The current uh, is in use on the motor. Its coil generates a magnetic force. The motor shaft 
inside the coil spins. Through my speed controller I reduce the current induced inside the motor. Its coil produces less and less magnetic force, the motor shaft stops. Generally speaking, in this specific case, two forces are involved, speed and power, the motor torque. Through the speed controller, the motor speed is reduced. And fortunately, also the power, the motor torque, decreases too. Once what current is less and less, the power, the motor torque, reduces too until the magnetic field inside the motor coil is not enough and the motor stops. And uh, I just showed you a motor without a load. Once the table is connected and a piece is loaded, the effect is even more noticeable. My first attempt to build a welding rotary table was made with an AC motor simply because I had one already. I did not buy it. So, if you got already an AC motor, what's uh, the proper way to make it work in a rotary table? We have two possible solutions. Through a VFD frequency inverter, inverter that practically is a speed reduce controller that reduces only the speed without affecting the power, the motor torque. The only problem is that uh, this device works only with the AC motors that meet specific requirements. I don't go into details because we are trying to stay general, explain the problem to rookies as myself. I don't want to make our life complicated. Most important, a VFD variable frequency driver inverter is really expensive. The cheapest that I can find is around 70 USA dollar, 2000 baht up. And again, the price doesn't justify the project that for its own nature wants to be cheap. A VFD inverter practically is at least four times more expensive than the AC motor itself, so in my opinion this is not a proper solution. The best way to implement an AC motor in a rotary welding table is reduce its speed through a mechanical reduction, through a pulleys and belt system. Let me explain please the concept with a sketch. As example, here I have an AC motor with a speed capability of 1500 RPM. RPM stands for RIP per minute. Let's connect my AC motor with a pulley with a diameter of 2 cm. To simplify, let's call this pulley A. Then here I have my rotary table, let's connect it with a pulley with a diameter of 6 cm, let's call this pulley B. The system is connected through a belt. In a transmission mechanism as the one that I just represented on my sketch, let's calculate how fast my table is going to turn. First off, let's calculate the gear ratio. 2 divided by 6 equals 0.33. My motor has a full speed capability of 1500 RPM. So, 1500 times 0.33 equals 495 RPM. Let's round it to 500 RPM. In a transmission system like this, I have a gear ratio of 0.33 or 3 to 1. That practically means every three revelations of pulley A, I'm going to have one revelation of pulley B, ending up with a reduction from 1500 to 500 RPM. Sorry, experts out there, I try to stay simple, 
So, rookies as myself can understand the fundamental, the main concept. In a transmission system like this, there are other variables that must be kept on count, such as distance between pulleys, belt tension, etc, etc, etc. Most important, with a mechanical speed reduction such as the one that I just shown you, I can reduce my AC motor speed without affecting the motor torque, without losing power. In a specific case as a rotary welding table, we need an extremely low speed, let's say 3 to 5 revelations per minute. Indeed, in this specific project, a DC motor is the best choice. Here, my DC motor is a 12 volt 8 ampere motor with a maximum speed of 20 rpm. I bought it for 250 Thai baht, 8 USA dollars about. A DC motor cause needs a power supply of 12 to 24 volt, can't be directly plugged to 220 volt as for an AC motor. A DC motor indeed needs a transformer as this one that I bought for 200 baht, 60 USA dollars about. Let's plug my DC motor and put it to action. I reduce speed through a PWM controller that costs me 150 Thai baht, 5 USA dollars about. As you can see, I can reduce speed through my controller, however, in this case, no power loss whatsoever. My DC motor, no matter its speed, keeps its power torque constant. As uh, we just saw for uh, an uh, AC motor, a speed controller works on current, decreasing the watt in used as well the motor uh, power, the torque. On the contrary, for a DC motor, a PWM controller doesn't affect current at all. Through the transformer, my motor is always supplied with 12 volts. The PWM controller works on impulse. Indeed, I can reduce my motor speed without affecting its power, its torque at all. Ok guys, conclusions. We generally analyzed differences between AC and DC motor applied to a rotary welding table and understood that a DC motor is the right choice for a project such as a positional rotary welding table. Indeed, I hope that this video will be helpful to carpenters out there who, as myself, have no experience about motors. I hope that uh, this video is going to clarify all your doubts, putting you on the right track since the beginning, avoiding the mistake that uh, I did. I'm uh, proceeding now by assembling uh, all the electric uh, components uh, with um, this uh, plastic box.
Now that all the electric components are installed, let's proceed by connecting my motor uh, to the rotary table section through a shaft like this one and a L shape profile to hold everything in place. Let's uh, assemble uh, all the components. Oops, sorry guys, rewind the tape for a sec because I must show you an important element of my system. Here are my shaft. Notice please uh, these two rings that uh, I crafted by cutting and drilling inch door like uh, this one. These uh, two rings are there to hold in place a copper braid like this one. Why? Let's assume that uh, I'm welding. My rotary table is on. My welder ground is clamped on the table. Current is running through the entire structure because my table is made in steel. Current won't affect my DC motor because its shield, its electric part are protected. The problem is represented by the bearing that supports and allows the table turning. Because current running through the entire structure while my rotary table is spinning, bearing sp uh, spheres can stuck, can glue, be frozen off. The copper braid is there to prevent such problem. As you can see, one side of the braid is um, fastened on the table structure. The other side of the copper braid is uh, kept in tension through a spring like this. Important is that the copper braid, while the table is spinning, rubs the motor shaft, preventing the above mentioned problem. Once more, I would like to thank my friend Giorgio and his channel Spinf74, who told me about uh, this problem, why the copper braid should be installed, explain in detail and guide me through. Giorgio, thank you so much, my friend. Your uh, deep knowledge on mechanic stuff, professionality, help and uh, kindness is really, really, really appreciated. And I mean that. And uh, here we are. Thanks also to the big help that I receive uh, from uh, Giorgio. Now my uh, positional rotary welding table is uh, working fine. Okay, my fellow carpenters, uh, one more project is done. Here a link if you want to check uh, other episodes of this Creative Thoughts series building a position air rotary welding table and uh, please, please check my friend Giorgio channel because you can find really useful tutorial and original ideas. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon.